Uh, Mike and Ken, I, I noticed the list, but one one item that um, <clears throat> it's not necessarily a cut, but it's not for us to consider, and that is the Comptroller has testified that we are uh, falling short of our projections from the franchise tax, the revised franchise tax in 2006 of about a billion dollars a year. Why is uh, there not a recommendation for us to address that, the, the loopholes in the restructured franchise tax? Because that's, <coughs> that's creating a $2 billion drag uh, on us every biennium. We can certainly talk about that. We tried to prepare a list that worked within the parameters of House Bill 4, which is not a, a bill to address that. But we, as we said, we can certainly talk about that. And, and, the reason why, and the reason why I raise it is because I know we've talked about the, re the recession, we've talked about the economy, we've talked about uh, things happening in D.C., uh, but in 2006 we made some changes. And we and we are now talking about all of the cuts that we are making, and everybody's having to make a sacrifice. But that is a billion dollar drag every single year. And even when the economy gets better, it continues to be a billion dollar drag, if not more, every single year. Now we did some cutting into, and and I think the what I would say to to the members of this committee. Since we're talking about cuts, we cut the property taxes in 2006 by one-third. We are also paying the price uh, for it as well. So, I mean, does is it not the view of the governor's office that with, the, with respect to all of the cuts that we are talking about and the reductions that we are making, uh, that this that is an important area that we need to address and we need to fix, and that we need to fix it in this in this legislative session, 2011. Because that's one billion dollars a year, and I'm gonna tag that since we since we're cutting from the elderly and we're turning off the lights. And all of these other things that we're doing, tell me why uh, people who are taking advantage of the loophole from the franchise tax that we put into effect, why we should not address a $1 billion leakage that's taking place in our house every year. One, on the franchise tax, it would take a statutory change that would not pass this House, nor would our governor sign it. And why a tax not? increase. And why would the governor not sign it? It's a tax food? increase. It's a tax increase. Yes. Close a, if there is a loophole, that means to close a loophole, that is a tax increase. He, he will not sign a bill. It increases taxes on anybody for any purpose. He would he would not correct he would not correct a, a measure that we took uh, that we imposed in 2006 that essentially was a hot check on every te on, on on Texans in this state. The check that we wrote in 2006 was a hot check. Chairman and Turner, is, when that is, bill passed, it was not a hot check. You saw the fiscal note, like I saw the fiscal note. Here. Still, we were all here. I was we here. saw the fiscal note. We we were told that that's what it was raised. We didn't know that it wasn't enough until yes, two years can. later, or maybe three years later. So yes. it wasn't a hot check at the time. And that's not true. That's not true. That's the, exactly the true. I saw the fiscal the note. at the time told us it was a hot check. We had debate on the legislative floor where many of us stood up and said that we, it was falling below its projections. We had all of those discussions in 2006. But even if I accept what you're saying as true, the reality is we know today that what we did in 2006 fell below the expected projections. And regardless of the economy, 
we have created a billion dollar deficit that's a drag on, 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 on this budget every single year. Now, we're talking about everybody uh, making sacrifices. And I think everybody here in this committee is in agreement to that. Everybody recognizes that we need to make some cuts. Everybody, I believe, here is prepared to make some very painful cuts. I am prepared to make some very painful cuts. I'm not running away from that. But what I'm asking is, as the CEO of the state of Texas, as the CEO of the state of Texas, if you recognize today that there is a leak in your roof and it's continuing and it's a billion-dollar leak, why will the governor's office not recommend to the legislature that we fix the roof and patch or replace this leaking roof of $1 billion? Will you agree with us at least? Will you agree with me? that the franchise tax is underperforming by $1 billion a year. And not just with me, the comptroller. This comptroller has said that the franchise tax is, is underperforming by $1 billion a year. Does the governor's office agree with that assessment? Absolutely. We know it's underperforming just as the sales tax is underperforming, just as the tobacco tax is underperforming. Yes, we understand various things are underperforming. That's what got us into this particular dilemma that we find ourselves in. But you ask me, would the governor make that sacrifice? No, he will not sign a tax bill in this session. That's it. I mean, I wish I could tell you and sugarcoat it, Chairman Turner. I'm telling you his official position and what he has authorized us any conversation we have, he will not sign an increase in a tax bill for any purpose. Then I want you, Ken, I want you to go back and listen to the, to the governor's address when he gave the State of the Union a few years ago in which he made it very clear that he was opposed to taking funds that were dedicated for a particular purpose and using them for another purpose. He said that on the floor of the Texas House. Okay. And I was going to comment on, I'm glad you brought that up. When you asked uh, Mr. Lloyd earlier, there was a couple of other things. It didn't occur on this side. It occurred on the Senate side that he asked Chairman uh, Ogden. He said, are you going to have a respective reduction in the fee or the tax or whatever the discussion was? I think you ask him, would the governor support a reduction in the fee? Yes, he would, without a doubt. If the governor, since the governor said, so number one, since he, he doesn't want to impose any taxes, right. and he doesn't want to correct a, ta a, a franchise tax that was flawed when we put it into existence, that's not based on the economy, that's based on the fact that it was structurally flawed in 2006, since he doesn't want to correct a mistake, that's costing us a billion dollars, and since the governor said and has repeatedly said that he's opposed to taking funds that are generated for one purpose and using it for another, okay, the governor said that on the floor of the Texas House. He's repeatedly said it. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Then can we just draw a line, a total line, through this $120 million, whether it's 120, whether it's 76? Or whether it's 31, will the, will the governor join with us, or at least at this point with some of us? He will if you're going to reduce the, the fee on my bill. I'm, a, I'm in favor of striking it. I, we're there. But, 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 let's, but let's do what we can do right now. This is not my sheet. This is y'all's sheet. Yes, put sir. Y'all put the system benefit fund on here. Yes, sir. Are you telling us now that, the government, that we can totally delete this line item from this page? If you totally delete the fee that pays for it. No. 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 This, already been paid for. this has already been paid for. The yeah. money is in the bank right now. Sure. And are you saying that you still want us to spend it for another purpose? Well, again, let us get you the right number because we were dealing with a number before we were able to see Chairman uh, Pitts's bill that includes the same methodology or protocol. Then, Ken, so. with all due respect, let me just say this. 
the governor's office doesn't want to correct a tax with the business community that was flawed when put into a fact. fact that's a billion dollar drag. Right. I would certainly hope that the governor's office would be just as willing not to take money away from the poor and disabled, okay? Not to take money from them in order to plug existing holes. Uh, okay? I want a governor to stand up for the poor and for the least fortunate as well as for those who are maybe more fortunate. That's what I want. Okay? I, I want I want him to fight for I want him to fight for the least of those as well as to fight for those who are more capable of fighting for themselves. That's the sort of governor. And I want a governor who's willing to manage the state and recognize when we have made mistakes and take the necessary steps to correct the mistakes. Okay? That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some leadership. Some leadership. Not grandstanding. Not making rhetorical statements that sound on good on the national scene. But some good, basic, hardcore management. Right here in the state of Texas. That's what I'm looking for. That's a fair request, Chairman. Representative uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Turner, I want, you said the word loophole several times, and that's the only reason I pushed my button. Because loophole to an accountant means that we've got a tax which somebody is escaping uh, unfairly. I will agree with you that it is not coming up to the comptroller's original estimate. And it was designed with a structure of using general revenue that was built into the bill. But I hope you understand that when you say the word loophole, that has a connotation of implying that somebody out there is getting a better deal than somebody else. And it was, I, I, you know. The only thing I'm saying, John, is that when the comptroller indicated they are taking advantage of some things that we did not expect them to, that there are businesses out there who are taking advantage of provisions within that. within. And, and if that's being done, then I would hope as audits take place, that would get corrected. But it's illegal until we correct. It's unintended. It was it's the the. the they use the term loopholes. It's not my, it's not. Well, it's I'm not, not sure who they is. That well, I'm referring used. to the Comptroller's Office. I'm referring to the Comptroller's Office. That they are taking advantage of provisions that we did not intend for them to utilize. And that is what's causing the $1 billion drag. I'm not saying they're doing anything illegal. They're not doing anything illegal. They are operating within the, the parameters of the law. And they're doing what any of us would do. If there's some bill... And, and we can legally uh, take some exemption. Okay. I just, maybe I misunderstood. Right. I thought you were implying there was a structural loophole within the law. It is, it is, it is something that we did not intend when we wrote the bill. We, didn't, we did not well, intend for them to take that advantage. But they are doing what they are legally, what they, are legal, what they legally can do. They're not doing anything wrong. We just didn't intend it when we wrote the bill. And the comptroller has said that unless we address it every year, it will cost us approximately $1 billion a year. That's the only thing I'm saying, John. 